Hey everybody, Nerical Murakami here, and I'm going to divert away from my usual gameplay videos. I want to talk about something that I have actually been passionate about for a long time, and that is watching pro wrestling, or as they call it these days, sports entertainment. Okay, so I'm going to be 47 this year, and probably about 38 to 40 of those years, I have been a fan of pro wrestling. Starting off watching these shows that were syndicated, brought to you by the uh, regionals, usually, you know, Crockett's Territories, Mid-South, you, know, you got, uh, who are they, uh, freaking... I can't even think of the associations anymore. There were so damn many. But as a kid, I watched it a lot, and I was really excited about it. I got caught up in the whole activity, the kayfabe, everything about it. It's like, of course, when you're that young, you think it's, you can think it's real. You know, you're not given the consideration that these guys actually have to make a living, so they can't actually be legitimately beating the shit out of each other on a day-to-day -day basis. So, but you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about that. So, let's fast forward. I grew up, I got a little more wise about it, and a little more logical about it. It didn't really diminish my enjoyment. I was able to suspend disbelief and still really enjoy this. I was watching all of these legends. I was watching the Hulk Hogan's, the Randy Savage's, the, you know, all these people. These, these, these wonderful, athletic, colorful, charismatic characters. Great people. And then, you know, as time went on, you got these other people. You got... Um, Shawn Michaels, you got The Undertaker, you got Kane, you got Bret the Hitman Hart, just to name a few. It's just, it was wonderful. Wonderful. And it's just kept on through the years. Um, of course, history bears out who came out on top with this whole shebang. It was an association out of the Northeast called, at first, the World Wide Wrestling Federation, WWWF. Well, they um, were, of course, the brainchild of Vince McMahon Sr., then his son, Vincent K. McMahon, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, came up with, uh, he, he took over the whole shebang, changed the name to the World Wrestling Federation, and started to expand. He didn't want to just be just another little territory. He had plans, big plans. And history, of course, bears out, they came to fruition. It went from being this little regional to a global behemoth and of course there were some you know bumps along the way I mean, what what company no matter how huge doesn't have its problems so of course we know that the name had to change because it was this lawsuit with world wildlife fund and somehow people would get confused if you mentioned wwf and you know the first thing that come to your mind is body slamming pandas or something like that so, of course, they changed their name from WWF, that is World Wrestling Federation, to World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. And it's been that way for friggin' ever. And, of course, you know, they've had their various scandals and this and that. But the one thing about it, it's always kept me glued to the TV. I was very entertained about this. Then another, you know, I mean, there have always been other wrestling groups, other associations, federations, companies, whatever. Um, one of them, of course, was WCW, which, again, is, that went way back to the regionals. Um, and pretty soon that got codified into its own company, thanks to Ted Turner, and WWE suddenly had competition. I was there for the entirety of the Monday Night Wars. Very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. It was great. Not only did you see an evolution and a second or third possible uh, reboot of the entire industry, if you will. It, it was just, you know, for me as a fan, it was very exciting. I loved it. And even after, post Monday Night, you know, war, post WCW, when it got absorbed by WWE, I still watched. Life kind of got in the way, and I didn't watch as much as I did, but I still kept up with it every now and again. It still seemed pretty consistent. Um, so, let's fast forward about a couple of years ago. I started really watching again, really paying attention. And what do we have now? We had WWE, 
The only other big name out there was uh, TNA and regionals, independent organizations. So uh, there's, there's, there was no competition for WWE. One of the things I've always believed in is that competition breeds excellence. WWE lately has really been proving this axiom true because lately, like in the last, I don't know, year maybe? Maybe longer. WWE has just been on this decline. It's the same old thing. They really, there, there's nothing. There's no imagination. It has, it has become boring. Every now and again, yeah, I, they'll, they'll come up with something that's really good. And really, you know, you sit there and once again, I find myself acting like I'm seven years old again. And just like, yes, this is awesome. But it's been happening so infrequently. I watch Monday Night Raw, which is, a, you know, there's always a live show. And I'm noticing something. Maybe if you watch, maybe you've noticed this. It's silence. Very little feedback from the audience. Never a good thing. Okay? When you are watching a, an event like this, I mean, okay, yes, it's athletics, it's theater, it's entertainment. This? But the whole thing of it is, is that you're going to either get really good feedback, you're going to get bad feedback. The worst thing you're going to get is no feedback at all. I have been noticing a lot of no feedback recently in WWE shows, particularly last night. As of this recording, it's WrestleMania weekend. This is the biggest freaking weekend for the WWE. This is the lead up to their monster event of the year, WrestleMania. Come on, this is the company that created the mega-sized pay-per-view event. Certainly there were pay-per-views beforehand. WCW, Crockett, for crying out loud, they, they started it off with Starcade a couple years before WrestleMania even was a thing. But WrestleMania made it huge. Here we are 2016. We are less than a week away from WrestleMania. I am not enthused at all, okay? In fact, I don't give a shit about WrestleMania. Raw this week was probably one of the worst ones I had seen in a long time. Not saying something considering how they have been declining quality for quite some time. The only thing positive you could say about Raw was the very, very beginning. You had The Undertaker, who was you know, guaranteed pop there. The crowd will always go crazy for this man, for the, for the phenom. I even go nuts for him, no matter what the situation. I liked him even during that whole ridiculous Ministry of Darkness period. I even thought it was awesome when he was doing the American Badass character. But the fact is, it's always The Undertaker. He's a draw. He is a legend. You can't help but to just go nuts when he's out there. And then, of course, there's retain or the returning Shane McMahon. There's that battle for control that's going to be happening in a main event at WrestleMania. That's good. This is a draw. People want to see things like this. So they had their confrontation, and everybody went nuts. Yay! And that was it. The remaining two hours and 45 minutes of Monday Night Raw was just nothing. It was ridiculous. Not even the possibility of the confrontation between Roman Reigns and Triple H could save the show. WWE just does not excite anymore. WWE has very little to offer. Not even the Divas division has much to offer. Now, I'm talking, of course, main roster. NXT, totally different animal. If, <laughs> if WWE had just really, you know, made me not care anymore, I'd probably at least be willing to drop the 10 bucks a month only to watch NXT. At least there's some talent there. 
if WWE wouldn't screw with them when they came over to the main roster. Totally different discussion. Next part. As I said, there is like barely any competition with the WWE, save for TNA. Initially, for quite a while, I so I sort of dismissed TNA. I, I tried to watch it a few times, and said, I don't know what it was. It was also during the period when WWE was still good, so I, I guess that probably tainted my view. But the last few months, I've really been paying a lot of attention to TNA, a lot more. And of course, now, since uh, my provider got Pop TV, thank you guys, I've actually been able to catch every show. Now, I'm sure some people would, the biggest uh, complaint they give to TNA is, well, they pre-record their shows and then they just edit it together. To the, yeah, that's kind of the point. I don't find this to be a problem. It actually, I think, enhances it because it allows cohesion. You have a storyline you can follow. And it's great. This is just probably one of the most incredible things that I've actually seen in years, is that there is an actual coherent storyline. These people, actually, they're putting a lot into it. They're putting their hearts and their bodies on the line and everything else. TNA right now is doing what WWE has been doing for ages, but for some reason, not. they're not doing it anymore. TNA, TNA is WWE during the Monday Night Wars. WWE now is WCW during the Monday Night Wars. Not something I'm willing to say lightly, but that is the way I'm seeing it. TNA is coming up with fresh ideas. They are really busting their asses to come up with a product to keep people like me, hardcore, long-time wrestling fans, coming back and really engaging. Here's, here's something else I know. The talent roster engages the fan base. Uh, over the last few weeks, uh, especially since I started really watching TNA a lot, there is a, uh, a three-person stable there that has really gotten my attention. They are called Decay. <laughs> um, I'm sure some people would say that Decay is like TNA's answer to the Wyatt family. But unlike the Wyatt family, there's really something worth watching here. They actually know how to keep you riveted, unlike the Wyatts. I, I can't even explain how it is that they that, that, that the other guys think that the, the Wyatts still work, because they're not working for me anymore. Something about Decay, it does. It works for me. Here's the other thing, too, is that they engage, as I said before, with the fan base over Twitter, over social media, there is interaction between the talent and their fan base. DK is rapidly building this great fan base. They are interacting with the people who appreciate what they are doing. Rosemary, Crazy Steve, Abyss, there are, uh, well, more Crazy Steve and Rosemary, but, you know, the, the point being is there's, there's interaction there. Even with their Fem their women's wrestling division, the one they call them knockouts. There's interaction there. They will talk to you. Even the heads of TNA, Dixie Carter, she, for crying out loud, she interacts with the fan base. You would never see someone like Vince McMahon directly answering the fan base if they had any questions or comments or anything like that. You would never hear that. This is a mistake on the part of the WWE. They are not really interacting with the universe. TNA is. TNA understands. This is a necessary thing to make them a force. If WWE, I mean, maybe I'm being optimistic, but my view is if the WWE doesn't wise up and really start listening to their fans, there's going to be problems. There, it, it, the fan base will just keep dropping off. In the meantime, you know, organizations like TNA, 
who have, I mean, come on, they got DK, they got Bromance, they've got the Hardys, both of them, playing great roles. You've got uh, their X Division. You've got, uh, I, I, I'm sort of just going off the top of my head here, so uh, I know there's another belt out there. Forgive me for forgetting what it is. But, you know, you've got this talent pool that is actually, they're doing great things. You're not, I, I, I mean, I, I don't understand politics, you know, when it comes to sports entertainment or any of that crap. All right, I don't know what it is. But I'm wondering, it's like, what is it with the WWE? What is keeping them from actually bringing up some great young talent that is engaging the audience and could really boost them, the WWE as a whole? Why are they continuously quashing these people that the universe wants, that the fan base wants? Do you really think that anybody would give a damn about the TNA if they just kept all these well-known, established wrestlers and just kept quashing down the, um, the new hot talent? It's... It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what WWE is actually... what, what their mindset is. I, I don't know why they're doing what they're doing. But I do know one thing. TNA has my attention. TNA Impact has a fan in this old fat spectator. TNA has kept my faith in this wonderful mix of athleticism action, theater, entertainment. And I say kudos to TNA. Keep up the good work because it's getting to the point where Mondays and Thursdays are, are becoming a big shrug. Tuesdays are where I'm getting excited, where I cannot wait for 8 o'clock to roll around. My butt will be in front of the TV watching TNA Impact. I'm still going to be watching the WWE every now and again, but I have a feeling more and more often I'm going to be disappointed by them. But anyway, that being said, I'm Nerico Murakami. See ya.